September 14th, 2018, at 7.15 a.m. Hurricane Florence made landfall in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. I'll never forget that day or time. My team and I were on the air covering that hurricane for 83 and a half hours. 83 and a half hours of science, stories, pain, fear, and heartbreak. Florence, just hearing the name, memories rush to the forefront of my mind, like the time I was in this John boat with the Heber family, just days after Florence made landfall. And I'm sitting in this boat, with Paul Heber, his two children, and his wife. And I'm peeking my eyes out of the boat, trying to figure out what the street signs were saying because they were all underwater. The bottom of our boat was hitting the tops of mailboxes. And I sent back that video that aired hundreds of times of two-story homes that you could barely see out of the floodwaters. Florence. Then there's that other memory. I could paint the picture for you. These group of firefighters were circled and kneeled in prayer in front of a home where a tree had just fallen and killed a mother and her newborn child. Florence. But I don't believe that I survived Florence because I'm any smarter than you. I bet you there's many things you could school me on. But the reason that I believe I survived Florence is because Monique is no stranger to storms. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced a big woe or challenge in your life. Anybody? For the purpose of this speech, I'm going to call it a storm. So keep your hand raised if you've ever found yourself looking back saying, wow, I can't believe I made it through that, but I did. Look around you. You're not alone. We've all experienced storms. You may put your hand down. I believe that our behaviors before, during, and after storms that Mother Nature brings can teach us how to respond to storms before, during, after the ones that life brings. There are three stages to the ordinary life cycle of thunderstorms. We have the developing, the mature, and dissipating stage. When all of the ingredients of a thunderstorm are coming together, we are in the beginning, the developing stage. The trees are dancing, the sky is beginning to darken, and you're standing there saying, I think something bad is about to happen. That's the beginning. I remember just days before Florence was expected to make its landfall, I was standing in my apartment. I removed all my bedding, and I was standing over my bed and had a box of neatly folded summer clothes. I had this black gorilla tape, and I was struggling to undo it, and I finally gave way, and I was able to tape the box shut. And I looked up, and all my walls were white because I had taken everything down. So I walked over and looked out my window, and my heart sank, and my eyes began to well. My entire apartment complex parking lot was empty. Okay, well, it wasn't all the way empty. There was one car still parked there a white SUV with a yellow New Jersey license plate, Danielle. That's what I used to call her. 
my car was the only car in my apartment complex parking lot. I was two months into my career. I was finally the meteorologist Monique Robinson, but I was also the meteorologist Monique Robinson, the one that has to go to work while telling everyone else to evacuate. And so, as I stood there in my apartment, I had to ask myself the same question we all have to ask ourselves when the sky begins to darken and it looks like something bad is about to happen. What can I afford to lose? Can I afford to lose this? If the answer is no, you have to protect it. So before the storm arrives, the first thing you have to do is protect your valuables. Now I was a fresh college grad, nearly 500 plus miles away from my family and all of which I had known. So to me in that moment, all of my clothing and items was my valuables. And so I had to protect that. But also there was something that was intangible, so necessary for me to protect. And that was my mind. Because I had to know that no matter how bad it seemed to look now, I was going to make it to the other side of this storm. Now for you, your valuables may be much different because based on your experience with storms and your assessment of this storm's conditions, well, those will determine your valuables. So whether you want to go to the next step or not, we're in the middle of the storm now. The sky, the rain is coming down, the sky is dark, the thunder is loud, the lightning is zapping all across the sky. We are in that mature stage. We are in the middle. And if you catch me on a newscast, I'll say, get indoors. And if it's a strong or severe storm, I'll say, get away from windows. And I'm encouraging you to do this to create a boundary between you and anything that could hurt you. Because when you're in the middle, you're fragile and you need to be protected. So when you're in the middle, you have to protect yourself. And I learned this the hard way. When I went off to college, I wanted to be the next big Oprah. I wanted to have my own television show. And my freshman year, I had a professor who told me that he saw no potential in me. And that felt like the most dense block of hail coming out of the strongest storm cloud. And I felt like I was really in the middle of a storm. I was struggling to make friends and they had no good pizza. And this professor tells me that he sees no potential in me. But you ever been in the middle of a storm and there's a part of you that says, well, what if this is almost over? Like, what if, if I give up now, what if it's actually over and if I just waited just a little bit longer, it might have gotten better. So I did that. I stayed another semester and signed up for some weather course. Oh, Dr. Timothy Canty, professor of AOSC 200, Weather and climate changed my life. I remember when he bought this machine to class and he would zap himself nearly what felt like a hundred times to teach us about lightning. And I thought, wow, so cool. My days became a little bit more chaotic. I was going from shooting a news story, carrying my uh, tripod and, and camera, it felt like 50 pounds of equipment to a physics lecture. But I was like, I could enjoy this storm. And the reason why I knew it wasn't over was because my junior year, I came to a disappointing realization. Television is a show and tell business. And so I couldn't show what I could do because I was a pioneer. 
I was the first student at the University of Maryland to dual degree in broadcast journalism and atmospheric and oceanic science. So I didn't have a green screen to practice and do the weather. So I brainstormed, went to the fabric store, got some green fabric, put it up in my apartment kitchen, and I started doing the weather. It was clearly no five-star production. You could see the fabric is wrinkled, the lighting is terrible, and if you could hear the audio, my fridge was very loud in the background. <laughs> but I thought my ticket to television was written. I was flying across the country, interviewing for jobs, and graduation day came and went, and I was still unemployed. Days, weeks, months. And finally, I got the call I'd been waiting for. Could you be in Wilmington in two weeks? Of course. Well, I wouldn't have been so enthusiastic if I knew Florence was coming in two months, but hey, all right? The storm is over for now. So before the storm arrives, we protect our valuables. In the middle, we protect ourselves. But what do we do when it's all over? when the storm no longer has its fuel to maintain itself and be in a thunderstorm, and it just dissipates. Well, you go out and you assess the damage. You find some things that are broken and some that are not. And for the things that are broken, you call some insurance company or some other customer service. And the first thing they ask you is, what would happen right then? You're on the steps, of, you're on the brinks of step three. As you share your story with the storm, you are protecting others. And I learned this from the most wisest of meteorologists. Last October, I had a digital series on my Instagram Live where I would interview meteorologists and they would share their untold stories of their career journey. I interviewed 31 meteorologists. And whether I was talking to Ginger Z, the chief meteorologist of ABC in New York City, or James Spann, the legend in Birmingham, Alabama, or Leah Pizzetti, an Emmy-winning meteorologist in Seattle, Washington, they all had a life filled with storms. One, two, three, four, and counting. The 10,000 plus viewers, including myself, that tuned in learned from their experiences with storms. So before the storm, we protect our valuables. During the storm, we protect ourselves. And afterwards, we protect others. I didn't know what college would be like. I didn't know what being a pioneer would be like. I didn't know what Wilmington would be like, and I definitely didn't know what Florence would be like. But I can verify, four years later, I survived the storm. And so did Danielle, for anyone asking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.